Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Christine with Gage Girl Training, an online meal planning and coaching service. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about eating for your body type as an endomorph. So, let's get started. So first of all, I wanted to thank you guys for the feedback and response, overwhelming response actually, from my eating for your body type video, and especially my endomorph pears versus apples video. And if you haven't checked those out, you can check them out here. I've gotten so many questions from my endomorph clients about how they should be eating, which shreds are right for them, and I wanna get into the options you have as an endomorph and how you should know what eating style is best for you. Now, if you haven't seen from my other videos, Endomorphs tend to have a slower metabolism. They have a tendency to concentrate more in the lower half of their body, more in the glute, more in the legs, more in the hips. However, that is my pear-shaped endomorphs. I have some endomorphs who have a tendency to concentrate their extra body mass in their stomach, which makes them apple-shaped endomorphs. Now, the biggest questions my endomorph clients ask me is how should I eat? And it's gonna come down to your level of carb tolerance. Now, that being said, how do you determine what your carb tolerance is? The first question I would ask you is, when you consume carbs, do you feel tired, bloated, lethargic and like you are still hungry even though you just ate a moderate amount of carbs. Now, if your answer to this is yes, when I eat carbs, and I'm not talking like you just ate a big thing of pasta. I'm not talking about when you eat carbs in excess. I'm talking about when you just eat carbs. If you are still feeling tired and bloated and lethargic and like a constant craving for more and more and more, you most likely have a condition known as insulin resistance. What that means is, when you consume carbs, you have a spike in your blood sugar. When that happens, that glucose that spiked your blood needs to be shuttled out of the blood and into your cells. That happens through the messenger hormone known as insulin. So what happens is insulin grabs the glucose in your blood and shuttles it into the cells. The problem is for those of you who are insulin resistant, it means insulin is grabbing onto the glucose, knocking on the door of your cells and your cells are not responding. So what does that mean? It means your body's trying to take the glucose out of the blood and put it into your cells, but because there's a resistance to that insulin getting through into your cells, that means you can't use the carbs you just ate as energy. So that means you're gonna feel hungrier and hungrier and hungrier and you're actually starving on the cellular level. If that's happening to you, you most likely have insulin resistance and an intolerance to carbohydrates. Now, for those of you who you eat carbs and you feel fine, you feel full, you feel satisfied, you may not necessarily need to go on a low carb plan. That means you have more of a moderate tolerance to carbohydrates. There are plenty of endomorphs who can consume carbs and have zero issues. So if you consume carbs, you feel full, you feel satisfied, you feel all right, you don't necessarily have to take a low carb, high fat approach. Now that works in general for most endomorphs, but I'm really finding in the last couple years, it's kind of like two thirds of my endomorphs are low carb tolerance and about one third of my endomorphs are moderate carb tolerance. So what does that mean? If you have a lower tolerance to carbs or if you just have a gluten intolerance or there's specific fruits, we can get into like FODMAP stuff in another video, but if you have a low carb tolerance, it means your body does doesn't fuel itself ideally when carbs are the primary fuel source. And you would do a little bit better relying on more fats than carbs. Now, for moderate carb tolerance, I still recommend that you stay away from the heavier starches, but still have paleo style carbs, like gluten-free, grain-free, things of that nature. In my experience in coaching endomorphs with moderate carb tolerance, they tend to do slightly better on my paleo style approaches. So these are your options. If you have moderate carb tolerance, I do recommend a more paleo approach, but that doesn't mean low carb. If you have low carb tolerance, I recommend a higher fat, lower carb plan, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to go keto, and I'm gonna explain why. So there are some situations where endomorphs should go on keto. If you have PCOS, if you have insulin resistance, if you have prediabetes, diabetes, go on keto. It's a great way to manage insulin resistance. However, if you are an endomorph 
with low carb tolerance and a thyroid issue, under those circumstances, I recommend low carb, high fat. I have a great 10 week low carb, high fat protocol that works really well. This allows you to have higher fats, lower carbs, but not quite keto. So again, to recap, my moderate carb tolerance endomorphs would do best with a paleo. My low carb tolerance endomorphs would do best with keto. If you have PCOS, diabetes, pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, my low carb tolerance endomorphs with a thyroid issue. Again, with a thyroid issue, you don't wanna necessarily go keto. It's too low in carb for you. I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions about which style plan is right for you, comment here or DM me on Instagram at Gage Girl Training. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.